Rope Asset, and we're going to code some VCDB. Um, but before we get into that, um, I want to point out something that if you're watching this, you might uh, care about a bit, which is that we're in the process of updating Varus. Um, Varus is the schema we use for coding um, incidents and breaches. Um, it's what we are converting breaches into on stream. Um, and every year we go through and try to make minor changes. We do a lot to try to um, make the changes as uh, non-impactful as possible and only make changes that we think will be valuable. Um, but, you know, there are always new things to do every year. And so we'll take a quick look at that before we get going. Um, these are the issues from the Varus repo. And you can see ones that are marked uh, schema change or enumeration. Um, we've already gone through, and if we can filter down, um, the next version of Varus is going to be 1.4, or excuse me, 1.3.4. Um, but it incorporates a lot of things that are hierarchical in nature. Um, and so for multiple reasons, it's hard to get hierarchy below like the variety or vector level. So something like action.malware.vector.email. Well, if you've seen this, there are lots of email. There's our vector, email other, um, email auto execute, email link, email attachment, email unknown. And so what we need is we need like, if any of those are the case, just say that it was email. Or if you don't know which one it is, say it was email. I mean, it creates kind of an internal hierarchy um, that helps us, uh, which is okay because the values are non-exclusive, so it doesn't change the sample size um, when doing calculations, but it helps both provide the, hey, here's how often, say, malware comes by email, and where we know it, here's how often it's um, an auto-execution or an attachment or things like that. Um, and so this is a way of tracking those things. Um, and so you can see for we've incorporated a lot of hierarchical things in this uh, update and for most people it really won't affect anything um, they are the hierarchies are applied using the rules.pi script which is in the bin directory of Varus. so Varus um, bin uh, rules and so you can see them there um, also if you look at the labels um, oh and I need to get onto the 1.3 branch the 1.34 branch to see this. Uh, 1.3.4. If we look at the labels um, for fields that are treated as hierarchical with par a parent child relationship, um, you'll see it marked as this is a parent, you know, or for children, um, this is a child. Um, and so, especially in hacking, a lot of the hacking enumerations are children of exploit vuln. So all these things roll up to that. Um, but this is just to just help with the documentation. Um, you can see all the issues which we intend to fix um, under the 1.3.4 milestone, things to fix or um, to improve. Um, they are all incorporated into roughly incorporated into the schema in the 1.3.4 branch and we're in the process of testing them out um, to make sure that uh, the schema works, that it doesn't break anything. We have to test it with the update script. So we um, update, we write a script that'll update any various 1.3.3 record to 1.3.4. Um, the rules script has to work. Um, we didn't make any changes to the validation script this year because the validation changes we made were in the scheme itself. Where possible, we like to use um, in-script validation um, so that the validation is really with the schema. Um, and so most of the enumerations that are um, where we increase validation are in the schema. And one of the places is in Nix codes. And so there's now a regex in the Nix code uh, schema that should try to ensure that the Nix code is one of at least the top um, two letters. And so you shouldn't be able to put in an invalid two letter um, into the Nix code. Um, excuse me. Well, that's just one of the examples of some of the things. We've also added 
um, OT and IT. Um, we added insecure deserialization to help with mapping to OWASP. Um, that was about the only thing that was missing as a hacking vector. Um, we rewrote the cloud enumeration section to because the original enumerations that were there were very much focused on actions within cloud environments, so like hypervisor breakouts and kind of cross VM type stuff. And we've really moved those over into actions, which is what they were, and made cloud much more about is the asset um, hosted on prem or is it hosted in external cloud. Um, ironically, that then makes it conflict a little bit with the hosting enumeration. Um, and we will probably end up having to clean that up next year. Um, and so there's a lot that's going to be uh, going in. I suspect most people who use Varus will um, not be able to tell any differences. Um, and if you're interested, if there's things that you would like to see in Varus and you believe that they happen enough in the data that they're worth including, because that's one of our thresholds, is if it doesn't actually happen enough in the data that we can enumerate on it, um, then there's no point in putting it in unless the goal is to prove a negative. You know, there are some enumerations we put in where the goal is to simply show, look, this doesn't happen. We have an ability to track it and it doesn't get uh, marked. Um, but in general, we don't want to put something in unless it's actually going to get marked enough to do um, analysis on it. But, you know, if you've got things that should go in, uh, consider uh, starting an issue, tag it as an enumeration. If it's just like adding a value under like a hacking variety or something like that, if it's more complex than that, um, tag is a schema change. Um, maybe I have to do the tags. But put the issue in, we will look at it, and it will go in. So an example of that are the actions. So within action, under each action, there is a, um, a result. That was a request from someone who uses Varus to put those in for the actions. And so that's why they exist. And so I just want to give that little overview of um, some of the changes that are coming to Varus as we make the updates, um, we will try to flow those into the web app as well. We've made a lot of documentation changes as well. Some of these are simply better defining enumerations. Um, and if you notice enumerations that are unclear, um, let us know. We can either create a schema change to change the definition, improve the definition, or we can create a, um, remove this, a coding style issue um, like these that explain here is something that you know is kind of intrinsic knowledge maybe institutional knowledge that we have that we would want to be available to everyone and how to code things and we'll try to get that document so with that I still have uh, VCD issues I'm not gonna be here Thursday um, we're going out of town uh, so we will um, be back later, but I will miss the uh, coding block. Um, so these are mine, and we'll get started. Uh, we'll start with um, this one. I'm going to skip the PHIDBR1 assignments for first and go down to this random assignment. And what is it? Taiwan Civil Service System reports data breach. Okay. Civil Service System. It's a fairly generic statement. Taiwan Civil Service System reported an information security breach on Monday, June 24th, with the personal information of at least 240,000 servant compromised. Wow. Through a notice published on its website, the Ministry of Civil Services said it received a tip off on June 22nd about the data breach, suggesting the information is leaked. Information of more than 590,000 personnel leaked in this database. Information was made available on foreign websites, says the agency. So the problem is that doesn't describe how. The actual number of civil servants affected was this, um, which includes anyone from January 1st and June, anyone in both central and local government posts between January 1st and June 30th, 2005. Okay. The files exposed reveal ID numbers, names, agency information, job titles, numbers, taking actions in to address the data spill in accordance with blah, blah, blah. 
compromised information systems ceased operating March 2015. The agency noted adding the vulnerable vulnerability management and protection measures for existing systems are being implemented immediately. What does that even mean? Like what happened? This always frustrates me when there's no information on really like what actually happened. Was discovered, was reported. So they found the data on an external site, but it says if they really don't have any information on what happened. They really, they know that, this, I mean, they don't, they don't know what. So this is in June, this happened in June. So let's search for this and see if there's any update information. <laughs> I know. Um, civil service, Taiwan, data breach. And this is like, this is one of the things that frustrates me is the new like way of, you know, a major operating system vendor puts out a patch. And instead of saying, Hey, you know, there's a new patch out, it's millions of systems are at risk. And it's like, yes, this happens literally every month when they patch, like we, there's no reason. And the systems automatically patch. Like, you know, why are you doing this? Um, Okay, so these June 26th, June 28th, July 28th, June 26th, it is concerning that none of these are particularly new. It's like they really didn't say anything about it. Um, I wonder if they actually all ever figured out. I mean, if the system came offline in 2015, they may not know. So because this is a large one, um, I'm going to go ahead and code it. Um, I'm going to just give it a low confidence. We don't really use the confidence for anything, but it's there um, in case, you know, we wanted to uh, do something about it. We have several references. Is there any real reason to include that one? Not really. It doesn't include any information. Um, we'll include these. Well, uh, but it is the first reference and there's always the possibility someone will try to make a decision based off of it. So we'll include a summary. Unknown actions breached civil servant information then found on uh, criminal forums, I guess. But my confidence is low because we, the timeline, I mean, you have to put in a year. Well, I'll put in 2019. No, the breach happened, put in 2015. So that's when the system went offline. Notification happened in 2019, um, June 22nd. Six twenty second. <sighs> compromise. We know nothing about compromise and exfiltration. Containment negative. I'm gonna say it's not applicable because containment happened. That the system was taken offline before it was the breach was discovered. No containment. The system was taken offline before the breach was discovered. Okay. Um, discovery, on the other hand, took four years. Right. And really, so it was this was disclosed by the threat actor. Uh, the victim ID is the Ministry of Civil Service. Of Taiwan. Yeah, and who would steal all the records of every civil servant in Taiwan? We'll never figure that out. Uh, I'm just going to go with large since, well, I don't know, it's the Ministry of Civil Service of Taiwan. Like, is that every employee in? 
I want. <laughs> this cannot possibly be the Taiwanese. Oh, there is a separate section for Taiwan. This cannot cannot be employed without examination employees. Blah blah blah. blah. Employment is usually lifelong until the age of retirement. Not a bad job. Uh, Ministry of Civil Service. Riyadh. That is not where we're looking. Albany. Okay, I'm just going to say large. Um, this is government. Um, and so let's see. Do we know what kind of government? 92. I mean, it's really kind of all. It's just civil service. But I guess... I'll do 921. This is executive, right? Administration. Well, no, it's. I'm just going to do 92 because that's like everything. Which is affected. Sounds like one in Taiwan. Maybe. Um, what is Taiwan's official designation? I'm going to have to look that up, actually. I should know it, but I don't. Uh. Countries. Oh, it's TW. I just didn't go down far enough. Province of China. Nice. Um, that is how it's coded. That's how it's coded. The UN level. State. I'm going to skip um, because I honestly don't know where you would locate it. I mean, Probably is spread out. Um, secondary victim, not really. So that gets us the victims. The actions, we have absolutely no idea. This is unknown. Breach happen far in the past. Systems offline for four years. Breach only known as data available on criminal. Forums. Okay. So at the very least, infiltrate and exfiltrate. Actor, probably external, unknown. Motive, unknown. Though I would have, if I had to guess, I would guess espionage. Country, we're going to say unknown. One of the things we're doing in 1.3.4 is making um, country um, non mandatory since we don't really have it that much. It was much more common when we use the Survey Gizmo. Um, uh, input um, and where we weren't inputting JSON directly and then it wasn't a problem because the import scripts would fill it in so even if you didn't fill in unknown you know, there was no manual action it still got filled in but now that we're filling in directly and we're validating against the schema at the web app level um, it's forcing us to put it in every time which is kind of a pain when we don't know it a lot um, the asset was a server. They described it both as servers and as files. So I'm just gonna put server um, amount. Let me see. Compromised information system ceased operating March 2015. So they know where the data came from. <laughs> uh, is this related to this breach or is this just from a enumeration of China? or Taiwan is their official designation. Um, the uh, Wikipedia thing. Yeah, and I think that actually at the international level, Taiwan is a, um, a subset of China. Um, the US recognizes them um, and various other countries recognize them, but we are using the UN's coding um, as a standards body so that we don't have to make geopolitical decisions. Um, our job is just to use the decisions other people have made. So um, we'll use the UN standard, the asset. I'm going to say the asset was probably in Taiwan. Um, I think that's a pretty safe bet. You know, we don't know anything about cloud or anything else. Attribute, the confidentiality, data disclosed, yes. And then we thought the data of 2,437, a very nice specific number. It's probably just counting unique values in the name field or something, the database or whatever was compromised. Um, this was personal information, IDs, names, agency information, job title, and numbers. Yeah, 
employee personal information. It was certainly stored because that's where it came from, but we don't really know a lot more. It came up on a criminal forum, so it wasn't used. We don't know anything about these. And by the way, these are free form text right now, but they are all gonna become um, controlled fields. This will be a drop down. So yes, no, other, in a, and unknown. Same for credit monitoring. And then these will be values. This will be a, um, a numeric value of uh, more than zero. And so you can put in a percentage since it's in years, if they offered, you know, 18 months or something, you could put 1.5 years. Um, partner number will be an integer. And so you'll have to put an integer from one up. Um, uh, if you fill it in at all, you can always leave it blank, but these will become a lot more controlled because free form text fields just lend themselves to poor data quality. Um, we don't know anything else about anything else that was compromised targeted this sounds targeted um discovery external i want to put actor disclosure since it was found on a criminal forum um, value chain we really don't know because we don't know anything about how this happened source i think this was a random assignment right yeah we'll mark it as random um, I'm going to leave the event chain completely empty because we don't know anything about it. Um, and mark it validated. There we go. I'm going to try it. So you'll notice in the schema version, there's something about the web app that codes the schema version with dashes instead of dots. Um, I am not a expert in how the web app is put together because I, I wrote the original version. Then we had a real programmer come in and write um, a second iteration of it. Um, but I still kind of have to do some of the main that I the script, the cleanup script, I think rules.py will change this from dashes to dots. Um, but it would be nice if it just used the correct dots in the schema version. So I'm going to try to change that um, when I uh, update the web app for version 1.3.4 as well but I may or may not figure out how to do it depending on how deeply it's integrated in the web app. Um, okay, that's one. We probably have enough time for two more. Um, this is a schema update that we're gonna make. So the default year in the VCDB schema will be updated to 2020. Um, we're also removing anti-forensic measures. Um, I've already removed all the codings from it for the data because they really overlap with um, mostly availability. Um, attributes and then we'll just remove it from the schema if you want it in your schema you can create a, um, a schema diff to add it in if it's something that you use but in general we don't normally fill it out because we almost we rarely see it and we can normally capture it through availability impacts um, rather than you know in its own unique field so we did this one uh, let's do this one and then we'll do one of the um, other ones. This one, October 22nd. Yeah, but it's not this year. Not to respond. Demonstrates how not to respond to breach. Uh, okay, well, we'll do the first one. No, I don't expect this to be uh, a wholesome experience. Okay. And mix ups, blah, blah, blah. Just tell me what happened. Uh, it says patients complete records when he, okay. Now it sent Daryl Payne, some other patients complete records when he requests his own file. That happens. When he contacted them about it <clears throat> and kindly offered to bring them back to the patient file, they did the but no need to do that. We'll send someone over to you to pick them up immediately. Okay, but the person doesn't come. According to paying the hospital, oh, they apparently did not. Oh, did they say that? No, they said it's impossible. <laughs> not only was the hospital said about the uh, offer to bring back the records, but the very air itself, possible statement, blah, blah, blah. Supposed to get worse when he requested his own bill, 
this his own records to get them when he re-requested his own records to get them the hospital sent him a bill <laughs> he still has the other patient's records okay do they include dates on this <sighs> that is a bad choice okay requested this is how you end up in the news um some reactions where he says he's in disbelief be nice to know how long this lasted, but it's not really clear. Okay, on Thursday, he said, today I still haven't heard. When we talked to him on Thursday. It's until, okay. Two heart attacks. Uh huh, no, that's impossible. So we don't have a lot of timeline information here, but we have enough um, other things that we can kind of code it. Um, notes, um, GitHub ID, reference, take this, these two. And summary. Hospital sent, and it sounds like physical records, though normally they'd be on like a CD or something. This clean, because the media matters. Okay, patients' files. Files has to be digital files. Okay. Found out it happened in Mayfield, blah, blah, blah. Okay, Nate, okay, so yeah. Found Make sure this doesn't happen to anyone else. He said, "Mix up." Okay, someone else's records. It's normally sent. We'll just say records. Records to wrong person, then denied doing it and sent them and used to pick them back up. Okay, confidence. If medium, it seems there. So the incident happened in clearly 2019. Um, it's unclear when. Certainly, this is articles from October, so it could have happened before September. Compromise took minutes. This is going to be an error, so it's not like this really matters. Exfiltration, minutes. Um, discovery seemed to have taken a few days as he went and looked at it. Okay. Oh, come on. I do not want this at large. Try to get this back where it should be. And then get back to actually getting this done. Okay, so what does that happen? It's yet reports CBS Chicago. This is probably the other one, right? This one. Um, when he contacted them. Okay, so containment. Never. Um, they haven't gone to get the records. <laughs> I mean, they haven't contained it yet. Well, so unknown at this point. Someday I want to use the never. Um, victim is Christ Medic. It is Advocate Christ Medical Center, I guess. Um, whoop, uh, where'd my victim data go? I can close down timeline. Employee count, I have no clue. I mean, it's a hospital, so it's probably rather large, but it's hard to say. Let's say number of employees. Do 
do, do. Okay, they're over here. There's fact sheets. We've got 749 beds. 1,300 affiliated physicians, but that is not the same. Maybe LinkedIn has a better idea. Um, we'll give this a look. Uh, five to 10,000 employees. You've got to be kidding me. Um, for a 790 bed hospital. See, Advocate Christ Medical Center has 2,400 employees. Okay. Well, if there's that many there to sign in, you know, far be it for me to argue. We go 1,000 to 10,000. This is a hospital. Um, is 622210, one of our favorite ones. We see it a lot. One location affected in the United States, uh, which is going to be North America. Um, then Illinois. Um, okay, no secondary victim. And then the action is an error. And this is misdelivery, giving the wrong paperwork to the wrong person. Uh, it's unknown why they would do such a thing. Um, the actor is internal, probably just someone at desk, but we don't know. There is no motive for this type of action. Um, the asset is going to be media, um, and almost always this is going to be a CD. So media, do we have CD here? Tapes, other disk drive, disk media. Well, we'll go with that. I'm gonna assume this is just one because it can't take that much media. Um, okay, let's see. Media was again in the United States. Uh, this is going to be an A, but I'm going to skip that till we get that updated. Confidentiality, is data disclosed? Yes. And I'm going to put one person's medical information. Technically, you could code files or something, um, but that's right here. Uh, this is going to be stored unencrypted. Data abused? No. Uh, we can leave these for now. They don't really apply. Um, targeted, uh, not applicable. This is an error. Um, discovery method. Oh. Um, we normally say, um, where is it? I'm really a third party, so it's customer. Yeah. So someone who is involved normally received it. Um, value chain doesn't apply because it's an error. This was a P PHI DDR assignment. And this was a um, an error by an internal actor on media may a breach of confidentiality. And with that, you can oh, scroll up a little bit. Data market validated. Save oh, what did we miss? Oh, we put something in timeline containment. Timeline containment. Oh. Yeah. That should have been there. And this is that internal schema validation uh, doing its job. So copy that off. Start another one. Close this, close that. Um, close this record and we'll go back to our list here. So, <laughs> 
Oh, man. I used to have so many of those AOL CDs. I remember like when it was like, oh, there was like the point where you got one AOL CD and you were like really excited. And then the point where you're like, I've got multiple. And you're were, you were still so excited like you had multiple. And then you got to the point where you realized that they were just like, like you couldn't get rid of them. They were multiplying like triples. And you just didn't have any place to put them, you know? And like, then you're like, oh, how do I, how do I get rid of them? Um, back in the day. <laughs> Yeah, we used to have a ton of... I probably have a spindle somewhere of just, like... The bottom of it's probably all AOL CDs. Because it got stuck in with the normal, actual CDs and stored. So, okay. Uh, I'm assigning. Let's go back to mine. Let's see what I still have. Um, let's do this one next. The other random assignment here. Okay, what is this? Trade IO hacked loses 50 million tokens worth 7.5 million. Well, at least we know how much it's worth. It's always nice. Um, this one should go against 2019 because it happened in October of 2018. Um, and so just misses the cutoff for the 2020. Um, let me grab the number here. Put it in, get our references, copy those over. I probably should have read what this was first because I'm gonna read it and find out that I, maybe it isn't codable or something. Oh, of course not. Um, hey. Summary, so what happened? Oh, it's the second time I've vaguely double clicked and had this thing expand itself. Um, okay. Unfortunately, hacking has been pretty common. Trade.io, a lesser known Swiss-based cryptocurrency platform suffered a rare attack as it, as it affected the exchange's cold wallet. Yeah, I wonder if this is a North Korean one. According to the post released in the exchange's Medium blog, the exchange security team was alerted to a suspicious transaction involving an exchange-owned wallet. The wallet in question, which it was reportedly kept under lock and key in cold storage, held their tokens, held TIO tokens, which I guess is TradeIO's tokens. Tra oh, TradeIO's native digital asset. Okay. Upon initial investigation, the Swiss exchange realized some irregular trading activity TIO trading pairs on Bancor and KuCoin, two prominent crypto asset platforms, alerted both Bancor and KuCoin accordingly to disable any deposits and withdrawals and did the same on TradeIO as TIO transfers ground down to a halt on KuCoin and Bancor and TradeIO. The exchange's currency experts found that 50 million TIO worth 7.8 million US dollars had been accessed by an unauthorized user. To address the breach, they halted the trading. Yeah, I know. Like, <sighs> turns out that giving everyone the ability to print money was not um, handled in a simple and, let's say, consistently mature process. Um, to address the security breach, TIO halted, although the various hacks previously had affected exchanges like Bit, Humb, CoinCheck, and Zaith. Most recent most point out that the hack of a cold wallet was somewhat unprecedented. Apparently not cold enough. According to Trade.io, it was following proper cold storage procedures to a T. This all goes back to we don't know what happened, doesn't it? Places hardware wallets and bank secured safety deposit boxes along with all corresponding materials due to the latter part of the statement. Some believe that the hack could only be chalked up to an inside job. The exchanges apparently confirmed that the security deposit boxes were not compromised in any way. <sighs> Leaving the case is open in mystery. Great. Another one where the action isn't known. Future steps, TIO has sought to render the stolen TIOs useless with an announcement indicating the exchanges top with an announcement, which includes CIO Decided to fork the original altcoin into TIOX, <laughs> hopefully mitigating the impact the hack will have on the exchange ecosystem. Uh... 
Okay. Crypto currency hack. They don't know how. Lost 7.8 million of not of an uncommon cryptocurrency. I guess this should be crypto exchange. Cur currency that hope to to fork currency to fix to mitigate loss. I guess we'll go with that. You know, if I had to guess this, I mean, this falls kind of into like the North Korean type hacks that were looking for cryptocurrency for as a way to get money. Um, but I mean, we know like very little about it. Could have been an inside job. Happened in what, 2018, 10, um, and when? 23rd? Um, at least the loss will be cryptocurrency. I don't get to code that much. We'll just put this. Uh, for something. What about the other one? Did it say when they, like what day specifically? Uh, blah, 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 wait see. The, the weird thing is that they actually sound like they were trying to do the right thing, right? They had offline um, tokens, stored a safety deposit box. You know, they were actually, I mean, they say at least they were trying to do the right thing, and it seems to be uh, along those lines, but um, obviously it didn't work. Containment, so they discovered it. As I said, it all stolen the cold storage about made the way to wallets on this server. And so that all 50 million, oh, out of the 50 million stolen, about 1.3 million already made their way to other wallets on another server. <sighs> okay. So you can quickly realize the regular activity So where's the, what about the medium blog? Cause I'll bet that has a little bit more on the details here. So what is this called? Um, trade.io, search for the trade.io hack on medium. Hack. So they blogged about on November 2nd. And this is a different one. They noticed the breach on October 20th. So, because they don't know, we don't know how long compromise took because we don't know how. Exfiltration was clearly seconds to make the transfer. Discovery sounds like it happened within hours. Um, and then containment, maybe I'm going to say hours again. It sounds like they pretty quickly locked their stuff down and locked down the other exchanges. <sighs> it was 11 million at the time of the attack, but it dropped a quarter, uh, <laughs> during the attack. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Victim is trade.io. Uh, trade.io. Um, yeah, that's why I figured a small 10 to 100 person company. Um, one location affected in Switzerland. Uh, I don't know what's Switzerland's. What's Switzerland, right? Um, I guess I, I guess they were SW, but 
Oh, Captain Kirk's change says okay. I know it said Switzerland. I read it, yeah. So what is Switzerland's? CH. It's not going to guess that. It's a new thing every day. Switzerland. And Switzerland would be, region wise, that would be Northern Europe, maybe. Be my guess, but I have been wrong. Um, let's check in, see. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Okay. Actually, I like this map. I need to save this map somewhere, like specifically this map, because it's got the actual different regions pulled out. So you can look up really anything, which would be very nice. Um, so I always have problems, especially like over here and down here, trying to figure out where anything is. I guess Switzerland be Central Europe maybe then. Um, so what's the Nix code for that? Um, oh, don't tell me there's no, oh, here. Example of geopolitical entities, countries or territories. <sighs> okay, so it's an example, but that doesn't help. So Europe, but I don't have a code for Central Europe. Oh, for Pete's sake. This just doesn't help. Er, okay, so... Again, not helping. Um, okay, we're going to go with Western Europe. Since there is no code for Central Europe, even though it is on the map. Okay. Um, state, do we know where Trade IO is located? Um, what does it say here? Uh, give a city or anything? What? Hong Kong. Okay. Now I am just confused. Okay. So the future login. <laughs> There's the split. Okay, so they probably didn't lose anything. Contact us. Is there a support about placed in Lausanne, Switzerland? Okay. Um, gee, I wonder why a monetary company would be based in Switzerland. Um, let's see, what was the state? State. Or what are, let's see, Switzerland. What's the canton of Switzerland? Um, we'll just look them up on Wikipedia. Uh, Vod. That's actually kind of a cool name. Um, so they're in the canton of Vod over here. And so Vod is VD. So CH-VD. Nice. 
Um, okay, so that, oh, an industry. Oh, what is a cryptocurrency? Like, what's one of the common cryptocurrency exchanges that might actually have a Nix code that I can look up? Coinbase? Uh, Nix code? 523130. Now I'm curious, what is 523130? Commodity contract dealings and brokerage. Interesting. Um, but I am, I get it. We'll put that in there. Action. Um, do we know if it was hacking versus malware? I mean, we all we know is that they lost a credential. Um, it's unknown how a private key token thought to be only available in offline storage JP deposit box was stolen. Needs to infiltrate and exfiltrate. Actor. Um, so we really don't know. This They think that maybe it was an insider. So it could have been an insider or an outsider. The problem is then we can't code motive. What did I mark this one as confidence? Low, yeah. Um, the assets stolen were variety. There is one for cryptocurrency, isn't there? Um, probably not, actually. In fact, what was stolen were the credentials. So or the asset, what asset was involved? It was a token though, so it had to have been like a flash drive or something. Um, we'll assume one had the asset on, because that's the only place that they, we know that they use it in CH, Switzerland. Um, and the attribute was, um, and virtual currency as well. So 50 million was taken. And at least one digital certificate related to the token was stolen. Uh, data total, 50 million, thousand, million and one. <laughs> okay. Uh, data victim, the victim organization um, was, I must say, other, is the virtual currency, like what state does that actually live in? Um, the digital certificate was certainly stored. So we'll mark both. And it's really not clear if it was encrypted or not. Like it sounds like maybe it just sat on that drive. Data abuse, yes. Um, targeted, this sounds very targeted to go after someone's, uh, offline, uh, cryptocurrency discovery method was internal. Oh, I'm getting this double bounce thing openings. Um, I think this was, uh, no, not physical security alarm, antivirus, break-in, data loss prevention, fraud detection. No, because I kind of, well, yeah, I think internal fraud detection makes um, a, sounds right because it was a fraudulent transaction that caused it. Um, certainly internal, which is the most important part. Value chain, we don't know enough about the attacker's um, process to know what exactly happened from a value chain. Um, cash out, they're going to try to cash out cryptocurrency because that's what they stole, that's how they are making their money off of it. Um, impact, uh, let's say painful, um, because they lost some, but they really, they, 
they it forced them to fork the currency to recover it. And what always surprised me is there's someone somewhere that's going, you know, that was like intimately interested in the fact that this cryptocurrency that no one has ever heard of um, had a breach. And someone like there's someone whose whole financial plan is based around this cryptocurrency. That just surprises me. Um, this is a random assignment. Again, we don't know much about what happened. And so I don't want to labor that. And so we will validate it. So with that, we've got three. I would have liked to have done another one, but we talked about Ferris at the beginning um, and we're about at time. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I try to keep like a small amount of cryptocurrency just in case there's some random reason to need it, but I, I'm not making any bets on it. It's not my uh, uh, my uh, plan. Yeah, no, I I don't didn't think that that was like legitimate. Um, but like I, I understand that that would be a better. Though I I've known people that are like very gung ho about you know using it as a investment tool. Um, but you know, uh, to each their own. So. Anyway, with that, I'm going to call it a day. Um, I won't be back Thursday. I have other things I have to go do. <clears throat> but I will try to be back next week. And we can go through it um, and do this again. So thank you, everyone, for coming. I really appreciate it. Oh, um, I just saw the SSL about VariousCommunity.net. Um, I think that they're working to get the certificate updated. Um, they're aware of it. And it's just it takes a little bit of doing to get through all the internal wickets to get it updated. So. Um, they'll get it back, though. Anyway, talk to you all later. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye.